It's Mark Yegi here, Wealth Architect and Lifestyle Investor. Let's take your life to the next level. Welcome to the Wealth Architect Podcast. Hey everybody, Mark Yegi here again. And today I want to talk about the concept of shiny object syndrome, right? And you know these people, maybe you're one of them. I'm sometimes one of them. Actually, I'm a lot of one of them. But um, sometimes you end up like seeing something that's more interesting and you start spending your time on that. And then all of a sudden you see something even more interesting and you spend time on that. What happens is it takes you away from focus. And if you talk to any billionaire or millionaire, anybody successful in anything in their life, they will tell you that the one number one thing is uh, that makes them successful is focus. And so anything like shiny object syndrome is going to take you off your focus. So let's define it. First of all, shiny object syndrome is the distraction by new exciting things to avoid necessary tests. I used to have a friend of mine, I called him the butterfly because he would just butterfly from one plant to another plant, to another flower, to another flower. And he just never really focused on a lot of things. But when he did, he was amazing, right? So when he got really deep on it, and he wasn't just all over the place. He really got some things done. And so let's talk about the first, uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is social media, right? If you watched The Social Dilemma, if you've studied anything about social media, you probably understand that it's addictive, right? And that's why we need to take it out of our kids' hands. We need to take it out of our hands. We need to have periods of time in our days where we don't touch the phone, where we're not tempted by social media. And they say that it takes like 21 or 22 minutes or something like that to get back on task after you've been interrupted. I think that's actually building a habit. I think it's 45 minutes. But uh, I read something earlier today about what happens when your brain is focusing for 15 minutes and then all of a sudden you get some kind of a distraction. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're working on an email and all of a sudden you see a distracting social media thing pop up or you see a text come in from somebody that, you know, that's important to you and you start to focus on your text and pretty soon, you know, you're still focused a little bit on your, the email you're working on, but now you're focused on the distraction of the text of the text. And so it's really difficult to separate the two. And so you, it's like, it's like having one tomato plant and you have one glass of water that can water the tomato plant and that's fine. But you put two tomato plants down and now you've got to split the water between the two tomato plants. And now they're both kind of uh, not really that healthy. Put a third tomato plant in there and one of them is going to die and the other two are not going to be healthy. So you've got to focus your energy, right? It's a key component of anything that uh, Napoleon Hill said, that I say, that any billionaire, any millionaire, any successful person says is that you have to focus your energy because distractions are the killer. Ew. Excuse me. All right. So um, what ha what ends up happening, there was this there was this thing back in the early 2000s, late 90s that says, you know, women have this ability to to multitask. And yeah, it's it's been debunked now because it's been proven that multitasking doesn't work. But women are just better at multitasking and doing one thing at a time and then doing another thing at a time and doing another thing at a time and doing them pretty well when they do focus. But when they get out of focus, they're not doing any of them that well. They might be able to handle a few things. I might be able to walk to the car with a bag of groceries and unlock the car, but I would be way better off if I were just walking to the car with the groceries, then I unlock the car. Go with that analogy if you want, but uh, you get the concept. So everything begins with philosophy. And so what you have to do is you have to flip around your typical thinking. And what you want to kind of start to do is look back and see what the, the tried and true things were. Uh, and the idea is that new is really bad. And old, tried and true, is good. If you can flip your brain around to thinking, then maybe all the new stuff that you're getting is just a distraction. But the old stuff that you're really getting that's been tried and true is a better way to look at it. So, you know, the more popular something is, the more distracting it can be. That's why news is so exciting, right? It's new and it's news, N-E-W-S, right? And it, it pops up and it's like, oh, I've got to read more about this. And it's, it, you go down the rabbit hole and then you get your emotions involved and you want to, you know, Twitter back or tweet back or whatever. So you've got to just be careful of what's going on. Emotional control and decision-making is impaired when you are not focusing, when you're looking at this thing and that thing, you know, you can't really focus on what, you know, what, what needs to be done. So I don't know about you, but when I have a project to do, I schedule time. Okay. And I shut off everything. I shut off the phone. I shut off the email. I shut off any notifications and I give it three hours, for example, like if it's a three hour project, I will focus for three hours, only getting up 
on at minute 50 to take a five to 10 minute walk around the building, right? And then I'll sit back down and I'll go for another hour. But that three hours of focus allows me to kind of go deep on something. It allows, especially if I mind map, like I'll take out a piece of paper and I'll mind map. I'll just write whatever comes into my brain and it's all captured right there. And if I have that in front of me, I can keep going back to it. And I'm always focused on this exact task. And I can find that I go way deeper on that task. Right now, I'm working on some Google ad strategies, right? I don't know anything about Google ad strategies, but I'm learning. So I'm watching videos and those can be distracting. And then I take the notes from the videos and I really go deep on them and I'm, I'm applying it. But I can't do it when I keep getting distracted. I just need to have that focus on doing that. Hey, it's Mark Yeggy here to tell you about our cash flow machine trading program that's designed to teach you how to make safe, reliable income. Now we shoot for two to four percent a month of income and growth in your portfolio. And we have courses to teach you how to do this yourself or inside a mastermind community. And the best part of that is it only takes about 20 minutes a week to implement. Now, while two to 4% a month doesn't sound like much, I show you exactly how we took my IRA from $111,000 to over 500,000 in just 19 months without huge risk. I'm not telling you this to brag, just to show you that you can do this too. So to learn more about this program, go to cashflowmachine.io. That's cashflowmachine.io and you can learn more. So the bottom line is you have to avoid impulsive deci decisions and you have to kind of look at yourself objectively. I remember I reading this book when I was a kid and it, it, it told you, look at yourself as if you were somebody else looking at yourself, right? Detached. And so float to the top of the corner of the room and then look at yourself objectively. If you see yourself on the phone and handling your emails and taking phone calls and, and you know just finding yourself distracted, you're going to look at yourself and go, that person's certainly distracted. But if you can look down on yourself and go, wow, that person's really focused, it's a totally different way of looking at yourself. And building that habit is really important. Try to get that habit built where you're focusing on yourself, focusing on yourself. Okay. Now, here's what happens. You need to, what, what most people do is they make really quick decisions, right? They get some input and they really kind of want, would rather get the decision out of the way so they can get back to whatever was distracting them before. And the bottom line is you need to focus on those decisions and make them thoughtful, right? Really put some thought in what happens if this, what happens if this doesn't happen, what happens if it does happen? And those thoughts lead to correct actions, right? And so it, you get away from impulsive decision-making because you can now, uh, you could focus deeper and deeper. So I think you get that concept. Um, let's, let's also try to get away from the environment where we are just surrounded by people that say the same things that we say, right? It feels good, right? Politically right now, if people are aligned with you politically, it feels good to have them in the room and people that are not aligned with you politically, you look at them and go, what, how could they be so wrong? Whatever side you're on, right? And, and that's causing a division for us, but, but really good critical thinkers get input, input from other people who think critically like them. And so I question everything I read now. Right. I can't believe anything that I read. I don't believe any of the media, the, the, the mass media. Uh, I don't believe any of the social media. Like I need to have like 10 sources, basically, in order to really go deep and figure out what I believe. And then I have I have kind of a decision made, but it's not completely made. I need other dissenting opinions to challenge my thinking. And I think that's important as well. Um, if you really want to be successful in decision making, I'm going to wrap this up in just a second here. And that is make sure that you take frequent breaks, you get lots of sleep, you get good diet and exercise, all those things that are you know important for clear thinking. And that way you can get in the habit of staying focused longer and avoid that shiny object thinking. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you a challenge. And that challenge is to Get rid of the distractions for some period of time. Challenge yourself to do it. Even if it's only for 10 minutes, try to focus. You know, I talk to people about meditation all the time. They're like, I can't do it. I tried it once and I couldn't do it. I'm like, well, that means, you know, they say that means you're doing it wrong, but you're not doing it wrong. If you're doing it, you're doing it right. Even if you're distracted, you know, one of the meditation techniques that I use is the distraction brings you back to the breath. 
right? You want the distraction because it brings you back to the breath. So if you build the habit of the distraction brings you back into the focus, then it works. So my challenge to you is to put your phone away, to put the TV away, to put the screen away, spend a few moments in nature without the distractions. Just be distracted by your own thoughts. Go deep on something. Maybe put the phone away for 10 minutes this week, 20 minutes next week, 30 minutes the week after that. So you get up to an hour a day or two hours a day where you don't have that distraction at all. You're going to be amazed at how much productivity you get from that bit of focus. And so that's going to help you avoid shiny object syndrome. See you in the next video. You've been listening to the Wealth Architect Podcast with Mark Yegi. Follow us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Share and tell your friends. See you soon.